Good morning and happy Friday to you. I'm Lauren Hall. And I'm Matt Snyder. And we're all decked out. We're gearing up for Go Red for Women Day. We're happy to help uh, spread the word of heart disease in this country and support women who have it and have fought it uh, by wearing red today. And we hope that you do the same at home. We also, as the world gears up for the Winter Games, we decided we wanted to take a little peek as to how it you know, you make that transition from the sport you love to being a medal winning athlete. So I've got the story on a local girl who is making some major waves in the sport of ice dancing. That's right. We also want to say welcome back to the kitchen to our friends from Orchard Fresh and Orchard Park. As we talk about preventative measures against heart disease today, we are going to learn another heart healthy recipe. Now let's head over to Matt to see how people around here are gearing up for the Winter Games. That's right, Lauren. Thank you so much for tossing it over. This story comes at a perfect time because all eyes are on the Winter Games. So we thought it would be interesting to see what it takes to become a world-class athlete and found that there is an extremely talented ice dancer right here in Western New York. I met up with the rising star to hear her journey. So let's take a look. There's a lot that comes between finding the sport you love and winning honors, medals, and trophies. And today we're going to find out what it takes to become a nationally ranked athlete. Well, I think from the moment I stepped on the ice, I always knew that I wanted to be a skater. In order for Caitlin's ice dancing career to take off, both Caitlin and her family needed to make a few sacrifices. This included picking up their lives and moving to Detroit. I think the moment that I really took off with my career was when I chose to move to Detroit, Michigan um, to train with some of the best coaches and skaters in the world and, you know, just um, focus all my energy on skating. With three major training facilities located in Michigan, Detroit has become one of the largest centers for elite ice skating training in the world. This move required some adjustment on Caitlin's part. When I first moved to Detroit, there was it was just a, right before the last Olympics in Vancouver, and uh, when I first moved there, I had never like witnessed or experienced any of that caliber skating. So to me, it was a bit of a like a wow moment, like looking around and watching all of the skaters just and seeing the caliber of skating. For athletes at advanced levels, the sport they love becomes much more than a hobby. In order to progress to the next level of athleticism, it must be treated as a career. This means practice, practice, and more practice. Each day is pretty much typical. It changes a little bit, but I'm normally up at around 6 a.m. and you know, I'll get ready and uh, I'll be on the ice at 7, 7.30 um, and I'll skate for an hour and a half to two hours depending on the day and like how long the sessions are. But it's normally around two hours that we skate. And that's just the beginning of Caitlin's day because just like your average 17 year old, she still has to take time to focus on her schooling. And then I'll have a break for a little while. I'll work on school. I'm a senior in high school, so I'm finishing up with my education and, and or at least the first part of my education and, and then once like I have a little bit of a break and I get some schoolwork done, I'll be back on the ice for another two hours. And that's normally around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. And I'll be done around um, 3 on the ice. And then, you know, depending on the day, I'll have some type of off-ice training, whether it's like ballroom dance or ballet or strength and conditioning, stretching, you know. And then my day is, or at the rink at least, is typically done around 4 o'clock, 4.30, and then I'm back to my condo in Detroit, and I'm working on homework until, until dinner time, until bedtime. Because ice dance requires a well-rounded skater, practice is split up between a continued focus on basics and training in specific skills in hopes of getting an edge on the competition. With skating, and especially ice dance, you have to have a very strong skill set to be able to do what you do. So we always try to start with the basics, you know, get some just regular skating, work on your skating skills, whether it's stroking around the ice or working on your partnering and, you know, trying to feel where each other are going as a partnership. So it's a little weird for me right now not having a partner here. And then in the afternoon, that's when we'll do like our major training and we'll do our run-throughs and our, and our endurance training and, and just to get the program as a whole and train that so when we get to competition, it'll feel very solid and, and ready to perform. And the practice has paid off. Kaylin now holds the title of Junior National Ice Dance Champion. And while one might think that this is because of the talent she was born with, Kaylin will humbly tell you that it's because of much more than that. I've always liked the quote that it's, it's, um, it's 
80% mental and 20% physical and you know being able to know yourself that you, if you put in the effort and the determination and if you have the drive for what you want then I think that's what really shows. You know, Caitlin spent so much of her time focused on ice dancing, she's moved away from home for it. So I had to ask her if she, you know, sort of wishes she had a chance to do all of the normal teenager stuff, like going to school and, and going to prom and talking to, like, you know, friends and all that stuff. And she said that she thought being able to meet so many different people from all over the world and traveling and all over the world and meeting and working with kids from other countries, she's gotten almost a better education doing that. So she was very, it was very interesting to talk about. She's very talented. The video is beautiful. So we spoke to her in honor of the Sochi Games, of course, starting today. Does she have a chance of making the team next time around? Well, she just met, she just was paired up with her partner, Jean-Luc. And they've been together, I think they've been skating together for about two years. She told me that the success w between the two has been very fast and very, very big. So, you know, it's another four years until the game. So if they've been doing so well for these two years, I can only imagine where they'll be in four years. And I think there's, there's big hope for uh, some promising athletes coming from Western New York. Could watch that video all day. So it's elegant very and beautiful. What a scary beautiful a sport. Bit yeah, but yeah, with so much strength behind it. That's that's talent right there. You right make there. it look easy, <laughs> right? Okay, thanks. Great story, Matt. We're gonna take